This video on if and while statements continues our fast overview of the C basics for folks who've seen programming languages before. Remember, we have our Python versus C reference at this URL that you can refer to. The next thing we want to look at is how if and else statements work in C. And so on the left side of this slide, I have a Python if else statement. And on the right hand side, I have the same thing in C. Take a look at this code and see what differences you can find between the two. The key differences here are really with how the code is grouped. So in the Python code, we end the if line and the else line with a colon. And then we indent the body of the what we call the then part, the print even, and the else part, the print odd. And that indentation tells Python what the grouping is. In C, there's a couple of key differences. We have to put parentheses around the condition for the if. And the other difference is we use curly braces to show the grouping. And so I put curly braces around the then part, the print even, and curly braces around the else part, the print odd. Now here's an else if statement in Python and in C. And again, take a look at this and see if you can see the differences. Some of you might wonder what square root club means here. Well, square root is for those students whose square root of their GPA is actually greater than their GPA. That means their GPA is below what? Yeah, below 1.0. All right, so here's the differences. We had the colon and indenting in the Python part as before. In Python, to do an else if, we use the keyword elif, E-L-I-F. Uh, in C, we actually just have an, a regular else and then another if statement that starts after the else. So are these braces optional? You might see some C code that omits the braces. We'd strongly suggest not doing that. Um, these braces group statements. And let's look at some example code that we would consider dangerous. Suppose we wrote the first two lines of this code. We checked whether your GPA was greater than 2.0, and then we printed out safe, if that was the case. But now we came back to this code and said, well, we want to be a little clearer about that. Let's add another print statement that says, hey, you'll graduate. What happens when we run this code for a member of the square root club? Well, if your GPA is, say, 0 0.5, we hit that if statement. Well, that's 0 0.5 is less than 2, so we don't do the if, and so we skip over the body of the if. But the body of the if in this case, because we omitted the braces, would just be the printf safe. And so we run that code, and it's going to print out, you'll graduate, even though your GPA is only 0 0.5. So that's dangerous code. It would be better to write it with the curly braces. Because if we had the curly braces around the printf safe, if we came back and added that you'll graduate line, now it's only going to print that you'll graduate if the GPA is actually above 2.0. And this idea of using the braces, even though they're optional, lots of companies make that part of their coding standard. For example, Microsoft requires their programmers using C to always include the braces. Um, and this problem actually even gets a lot worse with nested if statements, because you can have things executing in uh, very different conditions than the indenting would lead you to believe. In fact, a colleague of ours once spent an entire week debugging the code for his PhD dissertation. It turned out the problem was a single set of missing braces, just like in this example. So the moral of the story here is always use the braces, even when they are optional. Another question that comes up is whether C has a Boolean type. And in fact, it doesn't. Instead, C, being sort of an old school language, unlike the, the relatively newer Python or Java, C uses integers to represent Booleans. And so here's some example code. I set the integer f to 0, and then do an if statement. And I can actually use an integer as the condition here. And so in C, 0 is like false in Python or Java. So in this code, since we set f to 0, the condition would be false, and we'd print out it's false. All other numbers besides 0 are treated as true in C. So we've talked a little bit about ifs and conditions. Uh, Boolean operators in C are, again, a little bit different than Python, but they're exactly the same as in Java. So in C, we use symbols instead of words. So instead of saying and, we use a double ampersand to mean and, that they both have to be true. We use a double vertical bar. This symbol is called pipe, if you haven't heard that name, so two pipes mean or in C. And finally, we use an exclamation point to mean not. And uh, computer scientists like to pronounce the exclamation point as bang. Uh, so double ampersand for and, double pipe for or, and bang means not. Uh, here's a couple of examples of that. So if we wanted to execute the body of this if 
in the condition where a is between 3 and 5 inclusively, we could write it like this. This says a is greater than or equal to 3 and a is less than or equal to 5. In this example, we're calling a helper method same, which compares uh, v1 and v2. And so this code says if not same. And so it's going to call the same function, get the result back, and then negate it. So if same said they were the same, we put the bang on, and then that says not the same. So we've seen how to do conditions and grouping in if and else statements in C. Let's see how we could do while statements. I think you'll be able to figure this out. So here's some sample Python code that sets n to 10, and then does a while loop counting down and printing out the values of n. Pause the video for a second and try to rewrite that Python code like you think it should appear in C. After you've jot down, jotted down your thoughts, resume the video and let's see how you did. So here's how a beginner might typically write that code in C. We have to give an int type to n when we declare it. Then we've got our while loop. And in the while loop, just like in the if, we put parentheses around the condition, and we use curly braces to set off the body. Don't forget, you need the format string here on your printf. An experienced C programmer might be more likely to write the code like this, using a decrement operator, n minus minus, to cause n to count down by 1. Do you remember how you break out of a loop in Python? Well, you just use a break statement, and it works exactly the same in C. In the live coding that goes with this video, we'll show you an example of that. That does it for this introduction to the syntax of if and while statements in C. Be sure to watch the live coding videos for more examples on how to use these. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.